Today, we've been given a jigsaw by Bosch, called this jigsaw to test out. So I'll be taking that down to the workspace now, putting it through its paces, and talking through the key features with you. Let's go. Okay, let's have a look at what's inside the box. We have a fast charger, a couple of four amp hour Procool batteries, an Allen key, and a splinter guard. The machine itself, and these dust extraction attachments. I won't be able to show you these because I don't have the right fitting to fit my hose to that. But just know that they're there if you do. So I'm going to leave those out of the way. Right, so we've got Procore 4 amp hour batteries for the jigsaw. As per the other Procore batteries, it's got a readout there. Shows you the percentage. Green is good. And it's Ampshare, which is quite cool because it means there's lots of different brands can share the battery system. I think there's quite a few brands. I think if you go on the Bosch site, you'll probably find what brands are part of the Ampshare. But there's a lot of them. So the jigsaw has a brushless motor. This is a good thing because it means less friction and longer battery life. We have a blowing mechanism here which gets all the sawdust out of the way as you're doing an overhand cut. So we've got a really good little digital display here. Got an LED light. That helps with seeing the line. So we have the speed control here. One through six. Six being the fastest. And you can fine tune that in the Bosch Toolbox app. It allows you to it really dial in the speed from there. Now all the Bosch tools connect with Bluetooth to their Bosch Toolbox app that you can get on the Google Play Store. It's a good idea to get that because you can adjust, you can do fine tune adjusting of the speed, things like that. And there's another app called the Bosch Pro 360 app where you can register your tool online. You take a picture of the barcode on the old box and it registers all the tools inside and you can get an extended warranty of three years, so it's worth doing. So we've got two grips. We've got the overhand D grip for normal usage, and we've sort of got a barrel grip here, because I can get my thumb underneath for upside down cutting, which is quite handy. So you can use it for both. So another nice feature is there's an impact shutdown. So I don't have a blade in here. This is just to demonstrate, so safety first. Get it, get it going full speed. And if you drop it, it goes from a green display to a red display and it shuts down the saw mechanism. So here we go. Like that. All right, so the blade change is super easy. First things first, take out the battery. And here we go. It's a T-shank type blade. And put it in here. Pull the mechanism like that, drop it in. There we go, easy. So another cool feature is this saw blade guide here. That minimizes deflection because, again, I haven't got this plugged in, safety first. When you cut with jigsaws, it wants to do that. It's a very flexible blade. And this you can adjust to minimize that. You get it just as close to the blade as possible and it helps prevent the, the blade from deflecting. With the Allen key you slot it in here. There you go. Just be just shy. There we go. That's it. So it goes right up against the blade there without actually touching the blade. As close as possible. There's also a splinter guard it comes with that fits in here. But that's not something I would ever use. I don't really need it. But just be aware that it's there if you do. So now for the downsides. The base plate is fixed so you can't cut on an angle. Again, that's not a major train smash for me. I've never really used a jigsaw for cutting angles. But should you need to cut angles with a jigsaw, that's a consideration for you. The other thing is 
the hex key that you use to adjust the blade deflector doesn't really have anywhere to store it easily so it's just loose sitting around your box so it's very easy to get lost. So the jigsaw takes T-shank type blades I tend to use upcut blades you see the teeth point up because it makes for an easier cut you can also get down cut blades but I find that that causes the jigsaw to bounce like crazy and is very hard to maintain control the idea with the down cut is it's meant to minimize tear out but you can turn the jigsaw upside down and it achieves the same effect so these are good blades to use if you're doing tight curves it's a narrow curve blade and it's better to use that on thin material as opposed to thick because it's very very small and it's very likely to break but if you need to do tight curves on thinner material that's the one for you and something to consider is most packets of saw blades have the TPI written on and TPI is teeth per inch so the more TPI there are the cleaner the cut the less TPI the faster more aggressive the cut so this is the pendulum control action for the blade and basically pendulum action means it's more aggressive cut it makes the blade swing out as well as cutting up and down so zero is the least amount of pendulum action so it's basically going straight up straight down much cleaner cut but it's much slower if you put it on to max which is level three it gives a much rougher cut but it plows through the wood much faster so it just depends what you're doing this is the lock button again it's not really something I use but if you have it switched on you can't pull the trigger put it back in place triggers are operational again before you do the cuts make sure you got your safety gear on so gloves eye protection hearing protection before you change the blade it's always a good idea to take the battery out so you don't accidentally cut yourself another safety consideration is make sure there's clearance underneath the workpiece when you're cutting so you don't cut into your table you don't cut into electrical cables anything like that it's important so yeah there's got to be space underneath the blade it's very very easy to accidentally cut something with a jigsaw all right so let's see how it handles upside down cut Right, so now we're going to cut through some three centimeter thick pine. A nice curve cut. See how we go with that.
Then I'll come in here with a template and a flush cut bit or a guide bushing and bring it right up to the line for our cutting boards. But it makes a very good job of it. That was an aggressive blade and three centimeter pine is, is thick wood and made a very good go of it. So we just cut the handle out on zero pendulum setting so it's a nice clean cut. Now I'm going to set the pendulum to th maximum and see how fast it gets through the pine. So we just used maximum pendulum action on the three centimeter pine and as you can see it cut through that really fast. So yeah this is a very good jigsaw, I can recommend it. It's going to make my life a lot easier. <laughs>